Hello and welcome to Equations. In today's video, we will disprove one of the most popular and fundamental myths in mathematics. Most of us watching this video would have used the number pi at least once in our life. Many of us would know the true value of pi, but there are many more among us who grew up believing that pi was equal to 22 by 7. This video is for them. Of all the real and imaginary constants that exist, if you ask any mathematician to choose their most favorite constant, almost every single one of them would choose the number pi. Pi is the most important constant that we have. It is defined as the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter. It has also been defined in many equivalent forms. Pi is important because not only in the field of mathematics, but also in the field of physics and chemistry, it appears in several different places. So what is the value of pi? You would get different answer depending upon whom you ask. If you ask school children what the value of pi was, almost every single one of them would reply that the value of pi was 22 by 7. Let's accept it for the time being. However, this to me showed two major problems. Number one, the students had not grasped the concept of pi properly. Number two, the teachers who taught them at the school level most probably did not emphasize on what pi was and they did not emphasize on the fact that pi was definitely not equal to 22 by 7. 22 by 7 is only an approximation for the value of pi. It's also not a very great approximation. It's just an ordinary approximation for the value of pi. A better approximation for the value of pi is 355 divided by 113, which is accurate to 5 or 6 decimal places. 22 by 7 is accurate only to 2 decimal places, yet School children and several college children still believe that the value of pi is equal to 22 by 7. In this video, we will prove that pi is definitely not equal to 22 by 7. We will show, using simple elementary calculus, how far pi is from 22 by 7. On the other hand, in the year 1760, mathematician Lambert proved that pi was an irrational number. This means that we cannot express pi in the form P by Q, where P and Q are rational numbers. Pi cannot be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Pi is an irrational number. This automatically rules out the fact that pi is equal to 22 by 7 because if this were true, then 22 by 7 is a rational number, which is a contradiction. Now let us begin with the proof. Consider the ratio of two polynomials. In the numerator, we have x to the power 4 into 1 minus x to the power 4 and in the denominator we have 1 plus x square. We want to take the integration of this quantity from x equal to 0 to x equal to 1. But before we take the integration, notice carefully that in the numerator as well as in the denominator, every single term is positive. x to the power 4 is positive, 1 minus x to the power 4 is positive and in the denominator 1 plus x squared is again positive. So every single term is positive both in the numerator and the denominator. If we expand the numerator, we get x to the power 4 minus 4 times x to the power 5 plus 6 times x squared minus 4 times x to the power 7 plus x to the power 8. And in the denominator, we have 1 plus x squared. So this is a quantity that we are trying to integrate. But before we do the integration, we can simplify the numerator and denominator one step further. We can write it as x to the power 6 minus 4x to the power 5 plus 5 times x to the power 4 minus 4 times x squared plus 4 minus 4 divided by 1 plus x squared. Now we are ready to integrate. Notice that every single term can be integrated separately. For example, x to the power 6 upon integration gives x to the power 7 divided by 7. The next term, 4x to the power 5 upon integration gives 2x to the power 6 divided by 3, and so on. The only little thing that we need to be careful about here is the integration of the last term, 4 divided by 1 plus x square. If you recall what the integration of 1 divided by 1 plus x square was, it is 10 inverse x. So the integration of our last term will be 4 times 10 inverse x. Applying the limits of integration, we get 1 by 7 minus 2 by 3 plus 1 minus 4 by 3 plus 4 minus pi. And this is equal to 
22 by 7 minus pi. So the result of this integration is 22 by 7 minus pi. Now let us recall what we discussed in the beginning. We observed that in the left hand side in the integrand every single term in both the numerator as well as the denominator was positive. And since x ranges from 0 to minus 1 so whenever we replace x with any real number between 0 and minus 1 every single term in the left hand side will still remain positive. This is true both for the numerator as well as the denominator. Thus the left hand side is a positive quantity. On the other hand the right hand side is 22 by 7 minus pi. When we equate the left hand side to the right hand side we come to the conclusion that 22 by 7 minus pi must be a positive quantity. This is possible if and only if 22 by 7 is greater than pi. So we have proved the fact that 22 by 7 is not equal to pi, rather 22 by 7 is greater than pi. Now let us do one more thing. Assume that we do not know the value of pi. We still want to estimate how close or how far is 22 by 7 from the true value of pi. In order to do this, we will estimate an upper bound and a lower bound for our integrand. So let us rewrite our integration and this will be less than x to the power 4 into 1 minus x to the power 4 divided by 1 plus instead of x squared I'm going to write 1 plus 0. Since x ranges between 0 and 1 if I replace the x square in the denominator by 0 then my denominator will be smaller than that of my actual integration and therefore the ratio will now be larger after I replace the x squared by 0. So my integration is less than integration of 0 to 1 x to the power 4 into 1 minus x to the power 4 divided by 1 plus 0. Similarly if I replace 1 plus x squared in the denominator by 1 plus 1 then now my denominator will be larger than that of my original integration and therefore the ratio of the numerator and denominator will now be lesser after I replace x squared in the denominator with 1. So if I do an integration from 0 to 1 x to the power 4 into 1 minus x to the power 4 divided by 1 plus 1 then this quantity will be less than my original. So now I have an upper bound and a lower bound on my integral. This is because I have a quantity which is less than my integral and I also have a quantity which is greater than my integral. So now we can evaluate all of these three integrals and then after simplification what we get is 22 by 7 minus 1 by 630. This is less than pi and this is less than 22 by 7 minus 1 by 1260. Thus we have estimated how far 22 by 7 is from the true value of pi. By actually computing the upper bound and the lower bound to two or three decimal places, we find that 3.1412 must be less than pi and this must be less than 3.142. So pi lies between these two values. So in conclusion, the value of pi is not 22 by 7. 22 by 7 is only an approximation for the value of pi. Pi is an irrational number and it can never be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are natural numbers. I hope that with this video we have settled this argument once and for all. Before we end this video, here is an interesting side note. Do you know the person who first started using the Greek letter pi to denote the ratio of the circumference of a circle to its diameter? This gentleman was an English mathematician by the name William Jones who introduced the symbol in the year 1706. William Jones referred to the circumference of a circle as its periphery. This was a continuation of the tradition used by earlier mathematicians who had already been using the word periphery to describe the circumference of a circle. He then wrote down the word periphery using Greek alphabets. The equivalent of the first letter P in the Greek alphabet system was the alphabet Pi and that is how Pi got its symbol. But it became popular only after the great Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler used the same symbol to solve the very famous Basel problem. This will be a subject of another video. This brings us to the end of our tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will take up another very interesting topic of mathematics. If you like what you are learning, 
do not forget to like, comment and subscribe this channel. Also, if you have any topic that you want me to cover, please mention it in the comments below. So until the next video, bye bye and take care.